I'm Frank Hannaway. Welcome to Big Journey, Small Steps, the channel where I talk about my path towards self-realization and the small steps I'm taking to get there, aided by my teacher, Eknath Ishwaran. Well, today I am going to be talking about the Bhagavad Gita and my relationship to the Bhagavad Gita. Um, Gita means song in Sanskrit, and um, the title Bhagavad Gita means the song of God. And it's a dialogue. It's sort of a teaching lesson between Krishna, who is um, an incarnation of the god of preservation, Vishnu, and Arjuna, who's um, a hero uh, about to fight a great battle for justice. Now, the way I came to learn about this book, like so many other things that have impacted my life, was um, through George Harrison of the Beatles. I uh, got interested in all things Indian due to George Harrison, and I picked up my first copy in high school, and I read it, and I was horrified. Um, it was probably 1967 or 1968. If you think about your history, this was during the height of the Vietnam War. I was in high school. I was at least in name at that point only, a strong supporter of the anti-war movement, which, um, and so this, dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna where Krishna encourages Arjuna to fight this battle because it's his duty. Um, just, I, I, it was so hard for me to understand and I knew people that were on the side of, of uh, pacifism um, were great fans of the Bhagavad Gita and I just couldn't figure it out. And the other thing that it said that really stunned me was it said you were entitled to work but you weren't entitled to the fruits of your action. In other words, you were supposed to do what you were supposed to do and whatever the outcome in is um, was at God's pleasure and not not your pleasure and that so I was just stunned by all of that of course when you're 16 the idea that you would work for nothing <laughs> which is what it sounded like for me that you just worked and then uh, let go of what the consequences were or what the rewards were and so forth and so on didn't uh, resonate with me very well but as the years went by and I began to learn more about the Bhagavad Gita um, I began to understand that it was about an internal battle, not a battle on a battlefield, but it was a metaphor, a scriptural metaphor for um, the battle that takes place inside each of us between selfishness and um, serving God. And as I began to understand that, I started to warm up to it. And it's funny because I've reread it many times over the years before um, it ever clicked with me. I just kept thinking, why don't I get this? Why, what is it? Well, when I came to uh, uh, passage meditation, um, I discovered that Ishwaran, my teacher, had translated this uh, the scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. If you type in Bhagavad Gita in the Amazon search, it's the first one that comes up, his translation, which means it's the most popular one right now. And um, he was a Sanskrit scholar as well as an English literature scholar, but he had studied Sanskrit from a very early age. And, um, and he also brought his spirituality to it, so he looked at it as an instruction book on how to live the spiritual life. Now, that wasn't an idea that was 
uh, his and his alone, um, he was greatly influenced by Gandhi, who used the uh, Bhagavad Gita as a manual for daily living. So, um, in passage meditation, as I've mentioned before, we take specific passages and we slowly go through them in our mind and concentrate word by word on the, on the passage. And um, in the book, God Makes the Rivers to Flow, the anthology of passages that Ishwaran recommends, which um, there are, I'm trying to think, is it six or seven different selections from the Bhagavad Gita? And I have memorized all of them except one. I think at this point I've worked on it. And whenever I do anything on the video, I look at the camera and I go, I'm going to finish it. And I am. Um, and there is, each one of them is stunning. Um, in fact, the entire book is stunning. Um, in one chapter, Arjuna has a beatific vision. He asks Krishna to show him himself as God in all his glory. And it's so much that Arjuna can't take it. And it reminds me of the beatific vision that we studied about so much in uh, Catholic Catechism. Um, so anyway... In future weeks, I'm going to talk about these different verses, but I'm going to set you up for next week now by saying this. Um, I'm going to be talking about the last verses of the second chapter of the Gita, where Krishna just sort of spells it out. Arjuna says... Um, how somebody that lives in wisdom how what do they how do they act how do they talk how do they sit um how do they go about what do they what how would you how would you know if somebody was living in wisdom how would you know if somebody had reached the unified state and krishna sort of spells out what they've what the focus is of that kind of person and a few of the obstacles that prevent you from getting there easily. I'm going to talk about that next week. The link for that particular passage will be in the description below. If you see a little word that says, you know, there's a description, then there's a word that says more, click on more. It'll open up and I'll put the link down there so that you can read it if you so desire. Um, it's really fabulous. And it was this particular passage was Gandhi's favorite. And so, thank you for spending this time with me today. This is part one of the Gita and me. And um, part two will be next week. Um, from the bottom of my heart, as always, I wish you peace and joy. Mm -hmm.